Leonard Hamilton fifth all time. Brian Oliver in ACC with wins, 403 of them. Got a chance to talk with Coach Ham, and he said that, hey, you know what? I missed the memo on this whole thing with the transfer por portal. You know what? That's the first and the last time. I got it. Consider it. But we got a good win this afternoon. Again, when the open two teams right there is six and ten. Don't adjust your sets. Florida State wearing turquoise as they do from time and again, raising awareness for bringing sport to Native American and Aboriginal youth. This big time decision that they've made program wide. That's why they're wearing the turquoise. Boston College starts with the basketball. Jaden Zachary playing with a compression sleeve on his right calf. That's been a sore spot for him in recent weeks. Still waiting on the first shot of our game. Shot clock's down to four. Someone's going to have to put it up. Shot clock down to one. Up and in, Devin McLaughlin. Yeah, very good patience by BC, getting the ball inside to McLaughlin. You'll find time and time again, this Florida State team will basically switch all picks. That last time, Boston College doing a good job of recognizing the mismatch. Caleb Mills looking for help. Papa Miller. Didn't play the first 16 games of the year, but this kid has really come on late in the year. And the shot clock for Florida State dips down to two. Gonna have to put something up. So both sides wait until the last nanosecond of the shot clock to put up their first shot of the game. An empty possession for Florida State. You saw Miller last time for a young big putting the ball on the floor and then picking up his dribble. That's one of the things if you're Leonard Hamilton, you do not want to do early. But here's the thing for Florida State. They're going to extend their pressure. Interesting to see if they can get turnovers because that early offense is something that they definitely can lean on today. We played 75 seconds and have only seen one official shot. And a foul call as Makai Ashton Lankford hits the deck. In the act of shooting, so free throws coming for Ashton Lankford. And that's one of the things for Boston College that's key for them. When Ashton Langford can break down the defender and get to the basket, it makes it a lot easier for them because for the most part, Florida State's going to have a lot of their attention on Quinton Post fronting him and weak side help. Ashton Langford has improved big time across the board. And maybe not so much anywhere else as free throw shooting. He's an 87% free throw shooter. Many moons ago when he was a freshman at Providence playing Big East basketball, he was a 52% free throw shooter. So to go from 52% to 87 is huge in the course of a career. Looks like someone spent some time in the gym getting those reps up. And again, one of the best ways to get better, man, is to put that time in the gym. Only way to get better, partner. I wouldn't have known America, but it seems to me, right? <laughs> With my man, Brian Oliver. ACC great. Thought about a deep one. Turn around, Darren Green, back of the iron, rebounded by Zachary. Good defensive possession for Boston College through Florida State. You got to do a better job of trying to break down and penetrate. That's one of the things you see. Good pass in and flip over to McLaughlin. Thought it interesting. We talked with Earl Grant about teams now choosing to double team Quentin Post. He said that he wants him to invite the double. You see right there, a nice little dump off to McLaughlin right on the other side. Now, Lord Grant right now has got to be beaming because he talked about the importance of getting the ball into the paint and making things happen. And so far, so good. McLaughlin up and in. And having him play two minutes in D.C., doing it on both ends of the floor, getting good paint touches, and on the defensive end, not giving Florida State really anything to chew on. And here's the thing for Florida State. they got to do a better job of shifting the defense because Boston College is going to get in and try to disrupt what you're trying to do. Tom House going to get some early playing time. Comes into the game at the 18:04 mark. House wears number 12. Freshman from Dayton, Ohio. Comes from a basketball and volleyball family. Baba Miller sits. Mills bumped off his spot. Missed it on the tap. The follow-up is in. And that's what Florida State's going to be able to put their imprint on this game. You saw it last time. Mills getting to the cup, couldn't finish. Corn on the offensive rebound. Neither team really shoot the lights out of from behind the arc. But if you're Florida State, you have to get up and get downhill. Put a lot of pressure and break down defense and get these turnovers and get early offense. House with the steal. Green transition three is short.
Boston College on the road, just a pair of wins, two and seven. Skip pass, Ashton Lankford. Had it ripped away, back-to-back -back turnovers. This time it's Green with the steal. Active hands by Florida State. Again, that's what they want to do, turn you over and see if they can get some early offense. House fakes one way, goes the other. This is his first shot of the afternoon. Tipper, typical Leonard Hamilton fashion. There's always a sub waiting at the scores table. Post missed a short one. Good weak side help by Mills again. Trying to get that lob over the post. House. <laughs> come off the bench and aggressively fired up a couple quick shots. And here's the thing for Florida State, they do not have great three-point shooting. They're settling right now. Leonard Hamilton always preaches breaking down the defense and being patient. I think right now with a younger team, they have not been patient to run their offense, and some of that is due to Boston College getting up on them. Four minutes into our game, Boston College just one for eight, shooting the basketball. Zachary. Offensive rebound, stick back up and in, Elite Bay. And that's one of the things about Elite Bay, playing a small forward position, will crash because there's so much attention put on Quinton Post. It's great opportunity down there. Good pass, and good recover by McLaughlin. House found Corrin, but there was no room to get the shot off. You see good defense right there. You see penetration in what looks to be an easy one. You see McLaughlin say, you are denied. BC up by six. There's an 8-2 to two lead for the visitors. Boston College off to a nice start against Florida State. Brian Oliver, how about your four keys to the game? Well, easy for me for Boston College. Disruption through physicality. They're physical. They want to turn you over and get you out of source. And for Florida State, we talked about the fact that they have to get better in the paint on both ends of the floor, try to get to the cup, and they've got to limit Boston College and what they want to do on the inside. And how about that? Welcome back. DeMar Lankford hasn't played since January 28th. We saw him struggle in the first half of the game at Virginia. Hasn't played last handful of games, but he's back in the mix now. First sub off the bench for Boston College, along with Chaz Kelly, who's just checked into the game. A huge shot in the arm for Earl Grant because of his physicality and athletic ability. Gives you another de defender, and someone can put the ball on the floor and finish at the, at the rack. Little dump down. Good catch there by Naheem McLeod, who's checked into the game. McLeod's turnaround is short. Another change to tell you about for Boston College, Mason Madsen shooting a real good ball. He's checked in, number 45 for the Eagles. Madsen's one of those guys you have to stay close to him because he does not need much time to get that three ball off with a quick release. Quinton Post, seven-footer. Nice ball handling. Post gets it back in the corner. Splashes a three. And this is one of the things that we talked about from McLeod. That's going to be a hard matchup for him because being 7-4, you're not going to want to chase another big out there. When Post, he gets you out there. He is not going to waste time in launching that three. Chandler Jackson has checked in for Florida State. Number zero, who run the point. And a foul. No, stepping on the end line was the young freshman Tom House. Again, watch this last play. You see Post going to penetrate. Good ball moving by BC. Draw and kick, and you realize if you're McLeod, you have to understand the scouting report tells you he does not wait long to launch that three. A lot of skill with Quentin Post. What he can do with the ball handling, the passing, and the shooting. A lot to like. Post draws a crowd, gets it out to Madsen, who's left open. Last couple of games, that shot's been automatic. Yeah, but good play by, by Post realizing the double was coming. Welcome back. We talked earlier. Good hump fake by Mills. And up and under. Nice move getting underneath Post. Caleb Mills cracks the seal. Madsen passes high run down by TJ Bickerstaff. Had it poked out of bounds. It'll stay with Boston College. So the only starter remaining in the game for Boston College right now as they play with a seven-point lead is their center post. Florida State's going to make a change. Worley comes back in. He replaces House. Post. Back to 
back triples. Has it in the rim yet? Without hesitation. And you saw that last time. As soon as they run that play in, with his height being almost 6'10", 6'11", shoots over a smaller guard. Florida State has to understand they got to get a hand up on him quick. Mills, back-to-back -back buckets, virtually identical. And you saw two possessions for Caleb Mills, understanding that he can get by his man and finish. And again, Florida State, I think that's one of the things they have to focus on is getting stops on one end and trying to break down and get some buckets in the basket. Post, surrounded by three Seminoles, has it taken away. Green, that's the first three-pointer for Florida State. And if, if, if there's anyone for Florida State you want to see shoot the three-pointer, that's Green because, again, in transition, gets a chance to get that three up. Again, Florida State on a nice mini run on 5-0 run. Green's now got 83 pointers on his season. Pass deflected. Lankford's got it. Now Chaz Kelly. Offensive foul. Mason Madsen. You see back-to-back -back action for both teams. And again, you see weak side help here coming over for Florida State. Get out in transition. If you got to find anybody, Darren Green is the guy again. Allow him to get going. Knocks down that three. We talked about Florida State getting a couple of stops and going on a little 5-0 run. Florida State, they've hit their last three shots from the field. Makai Ashton Lankford comes back into the game along with Devin McLaughlin. Post sits for the first time. See how Boston College can operate without post. Ripped away. Bickerstaff's got it. And number one, Florida State knocks it away from number one for Boston College. Eagles keep possession. Boston College won a year ago. That game uh, in New England. Comfortable win for BC, 71-55. Main weapon for Florida State in the loss was Matthew Cleveland at 18 points. Told you that Cleveland will not play today. He's out for a second consecutive game. Chaz Kelly working on McLeod, and it was a bad idea. Got bailed out with a foul. Jazz Kelly, the freshman, went after the 7 4 Naheem McLeod. Had it blocked easily, but he was contacted with. When you see Kelly realize he's got a big on the side to try to dance on him, and then McLeod's a little late absorbing that contact and going back to Kelly. I, th I thought that throughout the year, he's been waiting patiently playing behind Zachary. Done a good job of taking advantage of his minutes. ACC co rookie of the week exploded for 17 against Virginia Tech a week ago. McLeod's going to leave. Corrin comes back in for a second tour. One out of two for Kelly. Jackson. Overplay, second consecutive steal by Bickerstaff. And now the Eagles will set up shop. Just playing keep away, a long way away from the basket as the shot clock dips below 10. Ashton Langford. That's the way you do things when you're a grad student. Been around playing a lot of basketball. A nice move by Ashton Langford realizing that anytime you get a big out there, you may not get all the way to the basket. Nice mid-range game. And again, for both teams, pretty much small lineups. Interesting to see, as you see, Corin come up with that shot. Both teams want to get out in transition if they can and get some early offense. We played close to nine minutes. Homestanding Florida State with only nine points. That's an issue for Leonard Hamilton. And an offensive foul. Second time Boston College has been called for that infraction. This time it's Demar Lankford. Well, his brother, Makai Ashton Lankford, doing work. Senior moment for the senior. BC up by eight. For 46. Gold Ford dealer.
The Fresh Market voted number one best supermarket in America. And Z-Max Micro Lubricant. Extend engine life, increase fuel mileage. Available at O'Reilly's. Going into the Wayback Machine, taking you back to 2012. The Seminoles, their first ACC title. They beat Miami, Duke, and the top-seeded Tar Heels in the championship game. Michael Snare, the Everett Case Award winner as the MVP. There is the banner, immortalized 2012. And Brian Oliver, you must have an idea of what that's like. 1990 with Georgia Tech, you doing your thing. You were the Everett Case uh, MVP of the tournament. Seems like eons ago, man. I've been literally dating myself. <laughs> 32 years ago, but you know what? I can still shoot that thing, man. I'm telling you, ball comes <laughs> over here. I'm shooting it, partner. I'm a, I'm a shooter, not a passer. I love it. All your cohorts were not in the mix that year, right? Kenny A was already gone. Dennis Scott was gone. I uh, know. That was actually a lethal weapon three. Oh, still was all three of those yeah, cats. All three all right. of us. Lethal weapon three in the house. Full effect. I love watching Kenny Anderson, by the way. So did I, especially when he was diving me. It was actually Mark Price's birthday a couple of days ago. Give a shout out to Mark Price. You know what, Sean? Talking about all time greats from Georgia Tech. Cameron Mills, or Caleb Mills with the misfire, tapped around, finally cleared by Prince Elite Bay back into the ball game. Post is also back in for Boston College. Boston College almost halfway through the first half. Both ends of the floor doing work. Well, what you see is that the great ball movement, anytime you can move the defense from east to west and then get to your first option right there, you see Quinn Post welcoming in that double team and getting the ball out of his hands way uh, really fast. Missed opportunity. Turnover in the paint. Here comes Florida State. Green hit one of those earlier. Jaden Zachary back into the game. Zachary may not be 100%. Been dealing with a right lower leg injury for a couple of weeks. Another turnover. BC's been their ocean worst enemy. Green took it right to the body of Post and didn't get a whistle. And here's the thing, Eric. Florida State's doing a good job of getting the turnovers. As you see, yet another one. They have not been able to turn them over and then capitalize on the turns. Nice block from behind. That was McLaughlin who took it away from Mills. Huge numbers advantage for BC. And your seven-footer <laughs> hits it off the window. How many times do you see a four on two and you opt to give it to your seven-footer for a bank three? <laughs> Whatever works. That is the third three-pointer for Post. And Post influences the miss there by Worley. Yeah, might as well wait for Post. And nope, is that going to be another offensive foul? Nope, it's a block. Again, watch the fast break. Again, you see Jaden Zagri realized I've got the big fella coming in. He's like, you know what? I meant that my bank is definitely we're open on Saturdays. But again, great recognition. No hesitation whatsoever. Big guy holds, strikes the pose, keeps that follow through. The postman rings three times. Quinton Post, 42% from behind the arc. My only issue is, with that stroke and how good it looks, why has he only taken 38 so far in this season? Why him up there more? Well, I think that teams, as he had, when he came back off the foot injury, a lot of teams, once he started dropping those numbers, paid a lot more attention. That's why, again, in talking with Earl Grant, he said he, he encourages them to accept that double team, get everyone else involved, and eventually those looks will come a lot easier. Ashton Langford. Rare miss at the free throw line for him. But the lead is 12 for Boston College. Florida State's going to get back in this game if they can spread Boston College out and do a better job of penetrating. You see right there, Jackson doing a good job. I like Jackson because at 215 pounds, stocky guard, they can get downhill. Now they got to get some stops. And one of the biggest things is they've done a good job of turning Boston College over, but they got to capitalize on the end. Deontay Green has checked in for the first time for Florida State. Freshman from Asheville, North Carolina. He wears number five. This is Post. Oh, Again! Man. His fourth three-pointer of our first half. You would think the scouting report tells you if anyone you go out to and you do not leave Quinn Post, again, this Boston College team normally only makes about five threes a game. Most of the time, it's Quinn Post, so you want to go ahead and stay with him. 
Body's flying. This is Jackson left open. Can't capitalize. Largest lead of the game, 13 for BC. And I'd have to say that the pace favors Boston College because on the Florida State miss, they're trying to not so much get on a fast break, early offense. That ball moves left to right and is shifting the defense, especially in their reading, getting the ball inside to Quinn Post and knocking down wide open shots. You see, a league bay a hits league a three. Bay. It is raining triples for Boston College. They lead by 16, and Florida State early on the ropes. They've got a call timeout. Listening into that huddle while BC is sprinting towards their bench. Well, again, when you see your big guys knocking down threes, you see Quentin Pulse, and then the Prince says, I want to get in this too. BC up by 16. Our Coyote turning point. He has made four for four already. And you look at just at his ability to get those threes down. Again, scouting report says you've got to close out. Has one of the quickest releases, not so much for a big guy, for any player in the ACC. Look at those numbers. He's missed two, two uh, inside field goals, but four for six, four for four from behind the arc, already off the 12 points. He stayed two shots from inside the arc. He's missed both of those. But in the deep ones, he's perfect. Well, and here's the thing. Boston College is last in the ACC with three-pointers made per game at five. They've already got five right now in the first half. And my man QP has already got four of them. Coyote Tractor turning point early. Boston College. Making it happen. Now, significant loss for Florida State. Matthew Cleveland now two consecutive games he hasn't been able to play. Look at the minute total. That's a massive number. You play for Leonard Hamilton. Expect guys to be coming in and out like it's a revolving door, but Matthew Cleveland is that important that Leonard Hamilton has to play and, him and the it's, majority of the game. And it's a huge blow for Florida State because you see 14, almost eight rebounds. This is a guy that there was their go-to guy, and then not having him on the line puts a lot more pressure on the other guys. Typically, Lord, uh, Leonard Hamilton likes to funnel guys in and have a quick rotation. He's playing starters more minutes and you see quicker fatigue and so obviously that's one of the things of not having Cleveland has really impacted them on both sides of the floor. Lankford misses a wild shot batted around cleared by Chandler Jackson. Florida State needs something easy. They have made just five of 23 shots here in the first 13 minutes. Madsen almost to steal. Good defense by Zachary understanding that we're green. He wants to throw that three-point shot up. Florida State's got to do a better job of taking care of the ball. And again, that was one of the things that for BC, they get up in you. They're physical and they want to push you off your first and second options. Florida State, you got to be a little bit more patient, spacing, make that ball pop, and then take your opportunities to penetrate. Florida State did not have a free throw attempt in the first 13 minutes. And the rip away by Zachary. Some of the best hands in the ACC. Zachary's one of those guys feisty down low, realizing he was part of that mismatch of corn. Came up with that steal. Second instance with Boston College playing with Post on the bench. Again, watch this defense. You see big on little. He was like, I don't know. As you call it, snatching cookies from him, realizing, and you know what? I'm, I don't need any help. Don't send the double. I've got him. Staying back, coming up with that steal. Madsen Zachary working in the backcourt alongside Langford. Kelly and Bickerstaff routing out the five for BC. Kelly somehow got it over. Langford along the baseline comes up short. Trying to get his legs back. Hadn't played in three weeks. The challenge there by Mills again. For Florida State staying solid on defensive end. They got to find a way to get some offense. Don't want to settle again for just a three-point shot. A little pick and roll. Boston College doing a good job of switching and standing in front of the ball. Wild shot by Darren Green. A rolling half hook. Madsen transition three. Making it rain on a Saturday afternoon. And, and that's problems for Florida State because you saw not great shot discipline. Allows BC to get out. And for Madsen, we talked about give him an opportunity to get that going. You see no one guards so Mills. Free run down. Finish up at the basket. Mills has got three layups here in our first half. 
Boston College is six for eight from behind the arc. Good job. Should have a 17-point lead when you do that. Kelly turns the corner, blocked away from behind. Mills, another layup. It's full. Good move by Mills. He hit him with two hezzies. You saw the first time realizing, hey, I'm going to hesitate right now, get to the basket, allow you to go by me. Again, this is where Florida State is going to get back into this game. Good solid defense, getting in transition, and getting to the basket. Zachary. Langford. Again, a three. The yeah. seventh first half triple for BC. Yeah, but Jaden Zachary did a good job of being able to realize he had nowhere to go. Defense is going to collapse. You get it over to DeMar Langford. Knocks down that three. Worley into the corner. And Mills is pressured by Kelly. Florida State has made one three-pointer, and they've not even attempted a free throw. That's a tough way to win a ball game in the ACC. And your best three-point shooter is Green, so they have to find some way of trying to collapse that defense and get him some uncontested shots. But in his first half, you see Boston College already up to 18. Their second unit did a solid job while Pulse was on the bench, and then Ashton Langford is on the bench. Interested to see now in his last four minutes, can Florida State get some consistent offense? Florida State, they bring in Shola out of BC. Just the seventh game he's played all year. Out of BC, where's number 51? And another foul called on Boston College. And you, so you see the new guys coming in. Leonard Hamilton with the injuries that they've had. He's got to give his starters some blow because when we talked about the minutes that they're playing, a lot of these guys are still not used to playing that many minutes because that was not the initial plan coming into the season. C.J. Pena has checked in for Boston College. Grant transfer wears number 24 for B.C. Mills has been the best form of offense for Florida State. His four race to the cup, and this will result in free throws for the first time. As Florida State has been searching for offense, it has been Mills that has been able to get to the basket. Again, you look at right now, down 18. You're not going to hit home runs. You chip away at this. Try to get it under 10 by the half, and then stay solid defensively. Caleb Mills, second year in the program. Started at Houston. The last two guys who have worn Caleb Mills' number four at Florida State both went on to be selected fourth overall in the NBA draft. You got Patrick Williams. You got Scotty Barnes. That's why I, I remember Williams. I couldn't remember Barnes. There's something magic in that number four here in Tallahassee. Closing in on the four-minute mark of our first half. It's been all B.C. Quinton Post couldn't handle the catch. Stolen away by Green. Oh, my goodness. A logo three. Didn't get there. And Post is undercut by out of B.C. So we've gone under the four-minute mark. 3.51 remaining before half. Boston College enjoying a nice working margin of 16. Welcome back, everyone. Busiest man in Tallahassee at all times is Florida State's Chuck Walsh. Congratulations to Chuck. Uh, he was named the U.S. Basketball Writers Association's Katha Quinn Award winner for 2023. That is a big, big deal. He will receive that honor at the Final Four uh, later this year. Uh, just an all-around good guy. 23 years now at Florida State. You walk into the building. Eric, great to see you. We're happy to have you here. We got a hot meal for you waiting in this room. Bathrooms are right over here. We're going to talk to Coach Hamilton with him. When you're ready, he is an absolute dream to work with. And Eric, I've been doing this for 15 years. And even when I'm not doing the games, I can always count on my man Chuck to keep me in the loop. Phone calls. Sometimes he'll call to check on me and my, and my wife and my daughter. Chuck is one of the best guys. Goes way beyond to make sure that He's making people, keeping them in the loop and keeping them comfortable. He'll call you from the team bus, talk trivia with you, talk storylines, whatever you want. Good stuff. Yeah. Congratulations, Chuck. Right now he's sweating bullets right now. The softball team, Lonnie Alameda softball team, in a little bit of a dog fight, taking on UCLA. That's the big story. One of the stories here in Tallahassee. 
Pulse. You saw Pulse. Oh my oh. goodness, Pulse! Oh. 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 No, no, stop it. Pulse. Oh. How do you do? <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, I was going to give a quick recap and say, well, basically, for those who may not understand how BC has gotten this life, you see Madsen come up with this steal. Get it to Post. Madsen. And this is it. I'm telling you, Quentin Post has got to be the best shooting seven-footer in the NBA. Maybe over the last 15 years. I can't figure out who would be better. That guy can stroke it. And Mills gets the benefit of the doubt. Look at this logo three. You watch the postman as he's coming in delivering in Tallahassee. Watch out here. Is it by the logo? Oh, yes. It's, by, it's at the mouth. It was like, you know what? Take that one, Florida State. And again, for Florida State, I mean, watch this. No hesitation. Didn't think twice. Go ahead, strike the poles. Keep that follow through like true shooters do. He is five for five from behind the arc. On the year, he is now 21 for 43. If he makes his next one, he'll be exactly 50 percent from behind the arc this season just an incredible shooter and it's not like it's looking goofy I i'm not a shot doctor but quentin post that shot is pretty oh you can tell like i said you know is that he holds it great form and most times with shooters you hold that follow through and if you look at the first half boston college is shooting 72 percent from behind the arc 57 overall Versus for Florida State, 26, and only one per six behind the arc, too. Boston College having trouble with the turnovers. And a reach-in foul called on Ashton Lakeford. Really, the only fly in the ointment for Boston College with the way that they've been playing is the turnovers. They've got nine of them, five committed by their graduate student point guard, Makai Ashton Lakeford. And, and here's the thing, Eric. If they're going to chip away at this lead, this is how they're going to do it. They have done a good job of trying to disrupt Boston College when Boston College is not raining threes, but they've got to be able to turn those turnovers into points off of turnovers on the other end. Jalen Worley. Sophomore from Pennsylvania. That's going to be tough for Florida State to get back in this game because they are not an elite three-point shooting team. They average six and a half threes per game. And a standard issue going by twos and ones from Florida State. Well, what they're going to have to do is that you see them right now extending their pressure. You want to speed this game up. We talked with Earl Grant. He said he did not want it to be a, a high tempo game, but it does see that for uh, Boston College, when they're getting stops, they're getting out into their early offense. So in this first half, the tempo has definitely been in their favor. A league bay. Zachary. Tough angle, trying to get it to post, but somehow makes oh, the catch my. and hammers it. Five threes and a dunk for post. And, and here's the thing. When you've got a little guy trying to front him, then you've got the weak side, another guard. You throw the ball anyway. That last time they were able to get it to post, he got through both of those guys and finished with a dunk at the rim. He is an uh, analytics dream. Threes and dunks is what... Uh, the smart people are talking about in the world of basketball these days, and that's all he's got. I mean, five threes and a dunk. I mean, watch this next play. You, you've got a small guard, and then on the weak side, you've got Worley. So basically, you say, go ahead and throw it anyway, because if he throws it, he gets past the other guard. There's no one on the weak side, and he's able to finish at the rim. And again, talking about his afternoon, 17 points, six for eight, and perfect five from five behind the three-point line. Actually, had a similar first half. A couple of weeks ago, end of January game in Charlottesville against the Cavaliers. Wasn't able to keep up the momentum in the second half, and that's when Virginia pulled away from Earl Grant's team. Well, I thought it interesting in the last game against Pitt where they lost. I thought Pitt did a good job of frustrating him in the first half. Earl Grant said that he pulled him aside and said, hey, you know what? Don't get frustrated. Welcome the, the double teams, and we'll make sure that we have guys in the right positions to get you the ball. They've done a good job of getting him at the right place and not being impatient. Quietly, Caleb Mills now with 12 points for Florida State. And a foul. Clinton Post has the full attention of Florida State. And we're going to have... Well, it's just the sixth team foul on Florida State. So side out of bounds. 
And if you realize with this lineup, then when you've got guys and Zachary that can shoot it, Madsen that can shoot it also, it's easy to be able to play a four out and one, one in because, again, that puts a lot of pressure. You see Madsen wide open over there, not able to knock that one down. Florida State trying to chip away before we get to halftime. 17-point game. Mills up and under. And he has been a foul magnet last couple of times down the floor. And Mills has been the one person that can get to the cup at will. And again, if you're limited, Leonard Hamilton going into the half, which could possibly be somewhere around the 15-14 point mark, you encourage your guys to stay the course. You've got to play solid defense, and you have to try to turn over Boston College and capitalize and just keep just chipping away at this thing. Leonard Hamilton has played Caleb Mills this entire first half. Really can't afford to take him out. Mills is the only one who's brought his offense with him. He has got 13 of the 22 for Florida State. 14 of the 23 for Florida State by that man. And then if I'm Boston College, I go with what's been working. You move the ball around. You do not go immediately in the Quinn post. You shift the defense, try to get him a little high-low action, and then force Florida State to react. Lankford, pass deflected. Another turnover for BC. They've been their own worst enemy. Chandler Jackson. Jackson using that good body to set up Mills. Stays with Florida State. Final 50 seconds of our first half. Spacing very important. You want to move the defense with the pass, not so much with the dribble. Florida State fortunate that they've been able to hit free throws because they have gone stone cold from the field. Almost five minutes now without a field goal. But here's the thing, as well as Boston College has shot the ball from behind the arc, Florida State's got an opportunity to go into to the half down at least 13. I mean, the way that Boston College has been shooting, they easily should be down by more than 20. What an interesting game has been for Caleb Mills. If he makes these two free throws, he will have 16 of the 25 for Florida State. He is single-handedly keeping Florida State within shouting distance. It's a combination of Dave Cowan and George McLeod. Inside, outside at the free throw line, Caleb Mills have a half and finally going to catch a blow. This is the first time he's going to sit in our entire first half. He's replaced by Tom House. For Florida State, you want to play solid defense. Again, opportunity to go into the half down 13. But for Boston College, you literally take advantage, ball movement. Kelly can't hit the three and a push off going for the rebound. And they're going to catch Devin McLaughlin. So we will come all the way to the other end of the floor. And finally, someone not named. Caleb Mills will shoot free throws. Well, here's the thing. If you look at the stats for Florida State, they're shooting 25% and 14%. And then when you look at how well Boston College has shot the ball, I think that if you coach Lennon Hamilton, you got a chance to go in under uh, maybe 11. I think you can probably take that and then regroup. Florida State is perfect. 11 for 11. That's a free throw line. Caleb Mills is 8 for 8 himself. One more coming for Chandler Jackson. We talked about the half by Mills. I think that Florida State's ability to turn Boston College over as well has been one of those things that's allowed them to chip away at that lead. Perfect at the line as a team for Florida State in their first half. For all intents and purposes, the shot clock is off. BC holding for the final shot, or at least they are hoping to. Kelly all by him lonesome. Kelly's going to have to restart. Locked at center court by out of BC. So a whole bunch of nothing for Boston College to end the half. And Florida State using a bit of a run to close. 
within nine, make it 11. Florida State, they go on a 10-2 run over the last 90 seconds to make this an 11-point game. Boston College, a lot of your chance today. For Florida State, we should mention, Caleb Mills, man, he had 16 points, the most points in a single half this season. He was 8 for 8 at the free throw line. He has now made 15 consecutive free throws. And maybe the coolest number associated with Caleb Mills, in 20 minutes, he was fouled seven times. Seven times Boston College had to foul to stop him. And there's a foul to begin our second half. Score the goal, Jalen Ward. And if I'm Leonard Hamilton, I go ahead and tell you, my guys, you know what? Hey, we have shown that we can get downhill. Let's focus on putting the ball down, make sure we have proper spacing. And then you see Worley comes out from the beginning, puts his head down, and goes in for what could potentially be an N1 to start off the half. Best thing that Florida State did in the first half of shoot free throws, a perfect 12 for 12. A Taylor Swift. 13 for 13 are the Seminoles, and they're within eight. First time they've been this close in a long, long time. And again, Florida State, you would not have thought that as well as Boston College is shooting the ball, that you open up the half and they're down eight. For BC, you stick to the script. Make sure you come out, spread the ball, and keep doing what you're doing. Don't try to go outside of yourself, and make sure you stick with it. Did you see that last time? Putting post realizing, I've got a little guy on me, a little mouse in the house action. Put the ball on the floor and take him to the rim. All right. I'm going to make a bigger deal out of this than it probably is, but Quinton Post needs to start making these free throws. He has got a decent chance of being a 50-40-90 guy, 50% 50 50 shooting from the field, 40% behind the arc, and 90% at the free throw line, but he's got to get to work at the line. He's at 86%, and that'll go up a bit. Now a message from Coyote Tractor. In my experience, if you work the land, you got to be a jack of all trades. You got to have a little bit of optimism and a whole lot of get go. All right, I'm telling you, I'm going to be keeping a close eye on this the rest of the season. Can Quinton Post, who's got a great stroke, get to 90% at the free throw line? He'd be the tallest player by a wide margin to be a 50 40 90 guy in Division I. And here's what I'll tell you that when I played, man, I did not leave any crumbs on the table. So when I go to the free throw line, I'm making sure that I get everything that I can. So as a guy in Quinton Post is having a great night, I'm, I'm interested to see does he make sure that he does not leave those crumbs on the table? Zachary got it off of Mills's foot. Turnover. Good defense by Zachary again. You realize over there, and he's going to come over and watch. But get those active hands over there again for Boston College. We talked about how physical they are. It starts with your point guard and how he gets up in the in the offensive player. Zachary last year against Florida State, 18 points, eight rebounds, six assists, five steals. A historically great game for him. He's been relatively quiet this afternoon. Shot missed inside. Post missed the tap back. But it stays with BC. Zachary runs down the loose ball. I thought he was going to shoot it for too. <laughs> Zachary. Natural run out from Mills. Be basket interference. Cam Corn couldn't keep his hands out of the cookie jar. But, but here's the thing for Florida State, you had a, a solid defensive possession, and then you see Cam Corn come right there. Oh, yeah. A little bit more patience would have given an opportunity. Then again, you have to like the energy that Florida State has come out with. Again, I cannot overemphasize. You see Quinn Post realize that, hey, you know what? I'm feeling it. I'm going to put the ball on the floor and try to get to the bucket. The scrappiness down there between Zachary and Korn. Call the foul on Zachary. Boston College had trouble defending without fouling in the first half. Florida State got into bonus early and made a lot of free throws. That was a big factor in the first half of how Florida State was able to at least stay within shouting range of Boston College. Absolutely. And we, we highlighted Baba Miller. And you see Green with the little runner right there. Corn thought he was going to give him a chance at the alley-oop. Alik Bay took his hand, eyes off the ball, lost it, stolen away. Mills 
is fouled for the eighth time today. They call the foul on Post. And what we've seen, especially in the first half, as Post draw, uh, draw is, uh, commits his third foul, any opportunity Florida State gets into transition, they're going to try to get downhill. And when you see a guard has a big guy backpedaling, you know that's a great opportunity to be able to go to the cup. All right, I was handed a note, so this is not going to be the announcer jinx. I was handed a note by the SID Don't do it. here Don't at Florida do it. State telling me that Caleb Mills has now made 15 consecutive free throws. So this would not be the announcer jinx. This would be the SID jinx. <laughs> I'm just here to tell you. You can win all these awards you want, but it's not on me. That is not on me. I'll even show you the note, folks, where I was handed. Mills has made 18 consecutive, 15 consecutive free throws. That goes by the wayside. First miss of the day for Florida State as a club. Oh my. And he missed two? Yeah. I'll take credit for one of those. One announcer jinx, one sports information director jinx. Empty possession for Florida State. Still down 10. Ashton Lankford crowded from behind. And the foul called. It's on Baba Miller. Well, I like the fact that Ashton Langford realized he had Baba Miller on him and as well as the seven footer can move his feet. He took his time, realized he all he had to do was get him to drop that last leg and get by him. Florida State's done a pretty good job in his second half of playing defense, but now for Boston College, you can make sure that you take advantage of those mismatches. It's tough being a young player in the ACC. Baba Miller, we talked about him beginning of the game. Opportunity. Coming off a nice game, 12 points, 28 minutes earlier this week. But a whole bunch of nothing for Baba this afternoon. He's got three fouls, hadn't tempted a shot, doesn't have a rebound, doesn't have an assist. And I think some of that is due to the level of physicality that Boston College is playing with. A lot of times he is going to drift outside. And for a seven-footer that wants to shoot the three, they're getting it to him. As you see right now, Boston College extending their pressure. Florida State having a little bit of an issue in inbounding the, inbounding the ball. Bodies flying. T.J. Bickerstaff hits the deck. And it stays with Florida State. D.C. getting greedy, putting some pressure on in the backcourt. And Quinton Post is going to leave. They don't want uh, their Post player to pick up another foul. He's already got three. I saw what you did there. Post player. Like that. Home run ball. Green. Touchdown. Oh. Oh, no, a foul. A travel. <laughs> so this is what happens when you give a three-point shooter a wide-open opportunity. <laughs> He saw an opportunity for a dunk, and you see great pass by Miller. You see Green out there taking oh, yeah. three, three steps instead of two, just like a three-point shooter. <laughs> so Boston College trying to run some offense with Quinton Post not in the game. Mason Madsen has checked in. Zachary, offensive rebound stolen away. Chandler Jackson's got it for FSU. Green much more comfortable doing that. And that was him redeeming himself. He realized that he missed an opportunity and said, you know what, I've got to get some get back right now. But again, as much as we've talked about Boston College, Florida State still hanging around here, still getting their hands on balls. And I'm really impressed with Baba Miller, his ability to switch off and stay in front of the, the smaller guards. It'll stay with the Eagles. Ten point game. And here's another thing, when you see the switches, Boston College is going to put the big on a small, but what Florida State is committed to, having the front side come over with weak side help, and they've done a good job in not allowing that post to, uh, pass to go in. BC, they missed their last five shots in the field. Ashton Langford dribbled into a crowd, it's another turnover. He has turned the ball over six times this afternoon. Jackson, off the window and in! What you've seen is that for Boston College, a lot of times one-on-one -on -one penetration, Florida State with their long hands are getting in those passing lanes, and every chance they get, they're getting downhill and trying to attack the rim. Madsen, bounce pass before the shot. We've got a foul. Either a foul or a kickball. And watch the active hands. You see Corin gets his hand in there, and then out of that, they're going to get the ball up, and you see get it in to be able to finish. That's the drive presented by Defender. And it was just called a kickball. 
on Florida State, so it stays with BC. CJ Pena now into the ball game for BC, number 24. Zachary had his pocket picked. Another turnover. Worley. Miller. Missed opportunity for Florida State. Madsen. And a tie-up. McLaughlin is tied up with Corin. All right, Florida State showing some feistiness. They don't want to be embarrassed on their home floor. They've made this a contest. It's an eight-point game. Remember, at one point, they were down 17 in that first half. Eight-point ball game. It will be Boston College basketball. Zachary, Ashton Lankford, McLaughlin, Madsen, and Pena. The five on the floor for the Eagles. Ashton Lankford starts with it. Ashton Lankford keeps the drill alive. Shot clocked out at five. Madsen picks up the loose ball. Fade away. Madsen never got there. Pena fights for the rebound. Ripped away. Bubba Miller. And what we've seen in the second half is Florida State has come out with a, a different level of tenacity. Again, going from one end to the other. And we've got body on top of body on top of body. And an offensive foul. You watch this last penetration by Jackson. And you see right there. I don't know, part. It looked like he may have been in that uh, zone. Let's see right there. It's a good thing that I'm sitting here next to you because I thought that he wasn't set. Again, right there. So look at that foot. That left foot right there in the unrestricted area, potentially. It's close to me. BC makes a change. Guy with the ball new into the game. Chaz Kelly the third. Chaz, the ACC co-rookie of the week last week. It's been quiet this afternoon. Also into the game, DeMar Lankford. Lankford playing the first time in three weeks for BC. Shot clock dips below 10. Zachary, long two. Finally, something falls. That's his first field goal. Had been 0 for 3 in 18 minutes. But here's the thing I like about Zachary's game is that he realizes they didn't really have any options offensively. Realist. Also, knowing that he's got a big on him, gets a little separation, knocks down that jump shot. Ooh, Kelly gets called for the foul, trying to stay in front of Worley. That's the fourth team foul on BC. Still playing without Quinton Post, who's got three fouls. Earl Grant just trying to buy some time with his star center on the bench. Caleb Mills back in for Florida State. Mills. And score the goal. Basket interference. Caleb Mills didn't waste any time trying to get to the basket. Love that he was able to get over there and realize that he had Kelly on him. A quick rip through to get to the bucket. And as much as it seems that Boston College has got control of this game, Florida State's still doing a good job of hanging right around there. All right, cut this lead down to eight. And here comes Quentin Post. Big man heads to the scores table. He'll come in next whistle. <laughs> Kelly asking for help. Shot clock's at four. And did he get it off in time? No, shot clock violation. Empty possession for BC. I think the refs are going to take a look at this one because you see that last. You see Pulse come back into the game. His number for the afternoon, 19 points, 6 for 10. Again, we talked about the 5 for 5 from behind the arc and also 6 rebounds. 
Yeah, that, uh, that shot will be looked at. DeMar Langford banked it in with the shot clock expiring. And you see the zero. Ooh, that looked like he may still have had a fingertip or a fingernail on that ball. Really quick review, and the officials come to the agreement that the shot was tardy. This was the definitive look at, for the zero. Yep, there's the zero on the shot clock. Ball still in the hand of DeMar Lankford. It scored as a turnover. It's become chronic for Boston College. And Florida State's got it. As much as we've talked about Florida State and how they've been able to get to the cup, if you're Boston College, you've got to be able to make sure that you do not allow Caleb Mills to get to the cup, force him to shoot some three-point shots because the only guy that's really a deadly threat is Green for the three-point shot. Attacks Post, who's got three fouls. Smart play by Mills. The foul is not going to be on Mills. It's going to be on Kelly. But that looked like Leonard Hamilton said to Caleb Mills, Quinton Post is in the game. We'd like to get him out of there. See if you can get a foul on him. And here's the thing. A lot of times when you run big on little uh, Post, excuse me, screen, if you got him, you want to get downhill, force him to either defend you or you get an easy run at the rim. So the foul is on Kelly. His fourth. He has to leave the game. Mills. That is the ninth time today. Folks, I'm not making it up. That is the ninth time today that he has been fouled by a BC defender. But here's what I'm going to tell you. When you're a guy and you know that you've got that feeling no one can guard you and you're going to get fouled, Caleb Mills realizes that if I can get spread, regardless of who's in front of me, I'm going to try to penetrate and get to the cup because I'm either going to get a bucket or someone's going to foul me. Yeah, Florida State's now the bonus. Next time they get fouled, it'll be free throws. Having to hit the 13-minute mark of our second half. And that's really early. Again, as you see Green trying to get, trying to get him started. Ashton Lankford on the run out. The overplay, ball knocked away from post, stays at BC. Last touch by Florida State. One of the things we haven't talked a lot about is that periodically you'll see Baba Miller switch down the guard. The seven-footer has done a pretty accurate, adequate job today in being able to stay in front of the guards from BC and not allow them to get by him. Leonard Hamilton's going to go with two seven-footers. You get Baba Miller, the baby seven-footer, at seven on the nose. You get Naheem McLeod at seven-four, joining him on the floor. A baby seven-footer. I love it. <laughs> Shot clock is at six. Post turns it over. Worley. Green. Boston College able to survive a bad turnover. We've seen a lot. Florida State doing a good job of being able to get hands on the ball. And we talked about how they get back into this game. It's still an eight-point game for Boston College. I feel like you got to give Quinton Post a, a touch right now. A post touch. There it is. Score the goal. You're brilliant, Brian Oliver. Yeah, but by a lottery ticket when we're done. But I love the fact that they were able to swing the ball to the top of the key because that, that pass to the rim, there was no weak side help and allowed him to go right over that guard. Caleb Mills weaves inside and draws another foul. Unbelievable. Mills has been a foul magnet. We'll have free throws on the other side. Again, when you need to get your man a pass, you see weak side help. There is none. Again, Post has put his imprint. BC up. Valley Sports South. Welcome back, everyone. 11.56 remaining in our ball game. Florida State trying to figure out a way against Boston College. Blue Cross Blue Shield North Carolina presents the upcoming schedule for the BC Eagles. Next game is going to be Wednesday against Virginia. That's a return game. Eagles have an X to, to grind with that Virginia team. And that early matchup, Quinn Post had a huge first half, but he couldn't hold on. Virginia won that. But then when you look at, at Wake, this Wake team's got a pivotal game against Miami.
fourth. Florida State, this is what they've got next. They've got a full week off. Not going to be back on the short pants until next Saturday where they head downstate to take on Miami. And that Miami game is going to be a, a huge game for them and then Carolina and then they finish up at Virginia Tech. That's why today's game is really important for both teams sitting at 6 and 10 in the league. Quinton Post remains in the game. He has got a game high 21 points, four in the second half. Look at that perfect five for five three point shooting in the first half. Second leading scorer in our game is at the free throw line. Caleb Mills for Florida State, 18 points. Eight of his 18 points coming at the free throw line. He has been fouled officially, it's the official number, 11 different times. That's a lot of hacking. He's been in the game for 26 minutes and two seconds. And in that time, he's been fouled 11 times. Man. It's going to be filled with one big bruise tomorrow morning. <laughs> Extended time in the ice tub. He's 10 for 12 as a free throw shooter. Moderate pressure in the backcourt. We've talked a lot about the, the pressure from Florida State and how they've been able to force BC into 16 turns. You see what looks like the 17th turnover. And again, it, and that was one of the things earlier is that for Boston College, they started out shooting the ball really well. Florida State, again, chipping away at this thing with their defense. Uh, interested to see, can they capitalize on yet another BC turnover? BC averages 12 turnovers per game. They have passed that mark a long time ago. Caleb Mills again looking for a foul. Didn't come. Missed the layup. Miller misses the tap. Stays at Florida State. Worley. Oh, nice. Nice by Worley. You see someone go down on the side. And I'm not sure if that's it's Mills. Mills right there. And again, watch the penetration. You see right there, then Florida State doing a good job of keeping that ball alive. And that last time, Jalen Worley with a little bit of up and under. Quinn Poles realizing he can't foul. And Florida State finally got in this thing under six. What well, looks like could have been another, another turnover. If you're Boston College, settle down, run your offense, don't do too much, and continue to spread the ball out. BC led by as many as 19 back in the first half. Now only up by six. Again, shot clock dips below 10. Skip pass into the corner. Post going to have to put it up. Didn't realize. Shot clock violation. And here's the thing is that you see Florida State basically make them go east and west that last opportunity when post got it They immediately doubled not realizing that he was under five on the shot clock And this has been the tail of the second half for Florida State already forcing BC into 18 turnovers Cut that lead into six Every head coach in college basketball will say there comes a point in every game where adversity happens But for Earl Grant's BC Eagles the adversity is right now they are limping. Still have a six-point lead, but Florida State on the charge. Green needs help in the corner. The big man, McLeod. Mills is relentless. Oh, whoa! finish Mills to Miller that is a highlight four-point game in Tallahassee and, and, and again you talk about the Florida State coming in Caleb Mills says that you know what man I'm not dropping nickels or pennies I'm dropping dimes Florida State carbon jack down by four it's bow time <laughs> on Valley Sports South presented by your local Ford dealer 
Welcome back, everyone. That is where the momentum is in the building. Leonard Hamilton's Florida State Seminoles, they've got the Tiger by the tail right now. They've come charging back. It is a four-point game with plenty of time to do some damage. Well, a lot of it has been Florida State's ability to turn over Boston College. First half, you saw that Boston College shot the lights out of it. Second half, Florida State been up the tempo defensively and been able to get downhill on them. And again, a lot of it was Caleb Mills, but he's got some help now in the second half. Stay tuned. We've got a fast break coming your way presented by your local Ford dealer. We'll get you ready for our second game today. It's going to be just down the way. Wake Forest at Miami. Important one for both sides. Boston College has gotten a little out of sorts as of late with their offense. Again, I feel like yeah, anytime you give Quinn Post a touch, not even from basket, bucket, or let that guy get to the cup and finish off. Makai Ashton Langford, much needed bucket. Last time down the floor, Florida State had that great assist by Caleb Mills, was handed a note. Just the second assist for Florida State as a team today. But coming out of that last time out, you see Boston College in the zone. Two assists in 30 minutes from a program that uh, produced Sam Cassell and Charlie Ward and Bobby Sura. Well, here's here's the thing is that when you see this last play by Ashton Langford, realize he's got a big on him a lot of times, put your head down, and then just get right to the basket. But back to your point with the uh, low assist, a lot of it is unassisted because they're getting right to the bucket for finishes. You're right, Caleb Mills, that's been their major offense. They give it to Mills, let him go to the cup. And we've got a foul situation. That is Bob Miller, number four. Looked like he was trying to get out of his uh, little shell here in the second half, but now he's going to have to cool his heels for a while. Just two points, two rebounds for Bob Miller, and now he sits with four fouls. BC has not made a three-pointer in the second half. How about the job by Green down there on the fronting of post? It took away that, that option. Langford missed the layup. Chandler Jackson the other way. Florida State's in the bonus. Bet your bottom dollar that Caleb Mills knows that. In attack mode, missed with the left hand. Green keeps it. McLeod, great fight by the big man. Just can't keep it with Florida State. A little, little scrappy down there under the basket. Good defensive possession by Boston College coming up with that play and rebound. Ashton Lankford knocked to the floor. So in Boston College searching for offense, it has been Makai Ashton Lankford, the grad transfer, who has taken the basketball right to the rack and been fouled. But here's the thing, how he's able to do that, because every time they try to get the ball into Quinn Post, he's being fronted, and then that weak side guy is coming over. Ball gets swung, and it allows one of those guards to try to get downhill and penetrate. 87% at the line. Florida State, they bring Cam Corrin back into the game. Naheem McLeod leaves. Oh, my. Ashton Lankford, 87% misses a pair. Mills. Oh, good defense by Ashton Lankford. Stands solid right there. Mills trying to get him to bite on the pump fake. Jackson cleared in the corner. Ashton Langford gets it to his brother. Behind the defense, oh. Ali Bay. Great read by Langford. Realized that Ali Bay, Ali Bay was able to get behind the defense, and for someone that athletic, you just throw it up and let him go get it. You're from Minneapolis, and your name is Prince. You know you're special. <laughs> Eight-point game. 
Uh-oh. And that's four. That's got to be probably four on yeah, both. It is. Not only is it a foul on post his fourth, but because of the bonus, it's going to be free throws. So free throws for Florida State down by eight when we return. Presented by your local Ford dealer. Our bag is bursting on a Saturday in the ACC. Coming up next, we've got a great one in Coral Gables. Wake Forest traveling to Miami to take on the Hurricanes. Well, both teams need this win, but I want to say that Wake probably needs it more. Last year, missing the NCAA tournament, they don't have any quad win victories. This is a huge game for them against a Miami team that's ranked 15th in the country. You've got both teams, especially this Miami team that plays well at home with that backcourt of Wong and Pat. They are dangerous. They put up points and buckets in numbers, man. This is going to be a, a high-impact game with both teams that depend heavily on the points from their backcourt because they won't, those going to get up and down the score, and this is going to be a high-energy game. And when you look at the numbers for both of them, Kyrie Appleby, 18 points, the 36 minutes a game. But then again, when you look at Isaiah Wong and what he does, partner, 16 points a game as well. Kyrie Appleby gets an A just for attendance. He plays over 90% of the minutes, 36 out of the 40 minutes he is available for his head coach. You got to like that in a college player. All right, an important one for the Wake Forest Demon Deacons as they head down to South Florida. Wake in Miami, back with more right after this word from your local Ford dealer. In America. Florida State down by eight, under eight to play. 7.39 in our game. They do have free throws coming for Chandler Jackson. Fresh Market presents Discover the Best. How about Caleb Mills? He has got 20 points with half of his points coming at the free throw line. And when it looked like early in the first half that they were going to get shot out the gym, it was Caleb Mills that I thought that put this Florida State team on his back to allow them to narrow the gap. He picked up in the second half. Again, already 20 points, and as you said, has drawn already 10 fouls interested in see especially with Pulse with the fourth foul how does this game turn with him in the game and his ability to get to the cup so free throw opportunity for Florida State I thought it was actually Chandler Jackson but it's going to be Darren Green at the line All right. Not too much of a quibble. This is a one and one for Green. 88% as a free throw shooter. Come from good stock. His father played at George Washington back in the day. Previous college experience played for ACC legend Johnny Dawkins. Oh my at God. UCF. JC, JD was my point guard my days in Philly. Uh, again, for. Florida State down six. Interesting for Boston College now with Post on the, on the bench with four fouls. Where do they go for scoring? Because when he was on the bench, struggled to find some type of offensive consistency. Blocked away from behind. Corin takes it. Six-point game. Green explodes. Jackson back to Green. Mills darts in the paint and another foul. 11th time that he has drawn contact. And he'll go to the line shooting a one and one. CPI security protecting the paint. What do you got, Brian? Again, you watch the defense. And how about the block by Corn coming up right there? Again, you see the defense that they've been able to play, especially in the second half. You come up with big play and that block by Cohen to allow Florida State to be able to impact this game. So again, the clock stops. 7:01 left in our game. Free throw opportunity. One and one. For Mills. I had no doubt. He's now one away from his season high. One shot, straight in, straight in. Mills good looking stroke. 
I'm going to be. If you're going to get as many foul calls against you, you got to be able to make the throws. But, but here's my thing. Earlier, Boston College went to a zone. Not sure why they went away from that because in that zone, then you're inviting Florida State to shoot the three. And the man-to-man, -man, they've shown that you have a hard time being able to contain the dribble. And then on this end of the floor, where are you going for buckets now that you don't have Quinn Post on the, on the floor? Zachary. McLaughlin. Score the goal and a foul. Great oh, putback. Oh, boy, did the Eagles need that. Talking about they needed that one. McLaughlin coming up with that offensive rebound. Watch this last play. You see Florida State people, and the ball falls right down to McLaughlin, gathers himself, going a little late on the rotation, comes up with the possibility for an and one. Much needed bucket for a team that struggled offensively. Stronger than 10 rows of onions. <laughs> Lead is six with a free throw coming. All right, BC. Some wind in their sails right now. Baba Miller back into the game. Miller's playing with four fouls. This is a freshman. Does he have the wherewithal? And we talked earlier for Leonard Hamilton. He's got to make sure that rotation-wise, the guys that are on the floor, he give them a blow periodically. You see Mills throwing up that three there. Florida State still with just one made three-pointer. They're one for ten. It's an issue. They've done a better job of holding Boston College without a three here in the second half. DC made eight first-half threes. Madsen. And a push-off. Yep. They saw that in the upper deck. McLaughlin the push-off. And will come the other way. And here's the thing we talked about. Florida State already being in the, in the bonus, too. How does that play for them in this last less than six minutes? Again, any I'm, I'm sorry. Any chance you can get to put points on the board with the clock stop is always a good thing. Quinton Post. Only thing holding him back is fouls. He is one of three Boston College Eagles with four fouls. Kelly, Ashton Lankford, and Post all one foul away from dismissal. And if you're Earl Grant, you try to buy yourself some time, run the clock, get some stops. I'd bring Post back probably about the three and a half minute mark. Basically, everyone on Florida State has turned into George McLeod at the free throw line. As a team, they are 21 of 23. And the only two misses is by you, the elite Caleb Mills. I was going to say, when you jinxed him, when you read yeah, the whole thing. It wasn't me. <laughs> Sports information director who will go unnamed. <laughs> the only two misses from Florida State. Five-point game. Boston College trying to win for a second consecutive year against Florida State. All three BC Eagles with four fouls not in the game as we speak, and they commit another turnover. Man. And if you're Earl Grant over there, the time cannot pass fast enough again. You say yet another turnover. Five-point game. Give Florida State an opportunity to cut this thing down to three, possibly two. And he decides to bring you man. Quinn Post back into a game saying, you know what? I'm not going to allow this one to slip away. Florida State has shot 28% from the field, but they're in this because of what they've done at the free throw line and all of the turnovers committed by BC. Mills is fouled again. And, and here's the thing. If you're Earl Grant, you have to tell your guys you have to defend without fouling because, again, the one guy that has shown that he has been hard to guard is Caleb Mills as you go on and then you talked about the fact that 21 for 30, uh, 23 from the line 22 points for Mills over half of his points have come right here at the stripe post back into the game look at that 10 next to uh, BC's name right there they're 53 points that 10 means 10 fouls that means double bonus for the rest of the game final more than a quarter of our second half every single time that bc fouls florida state two free throws and you look at those numbers by quentin post 21 points and four four fouls and so here's the thing that for bc 
I'm going to run some plays with try to get him back out on the perimeter because in the post, Florida State's doing a good job of fronting him and with weak side help. Allow him to get a touch when he's not focused on that weak side. We can get the ball to him. Madsen, two feet in the paint, out to Zachary. McLaughlin. That is a man size shot. Oh, my! Score it with a foul. If that's on Miller, he's done. What a pivotal moment. And, and watch that last penetration. You saw Miller had to come over because he was fronting. Late on the penetration, McLaughlin had already gotten to the rim. Watch the play. Miller comes over late, absorbs that contact for the N1. Miller's going to have to take a seat. Short afternoon for him. Baba Miller finishes with more fouls than points and rebounds combined in his game. Two points, two rebounds, five fouls. Learning experience for the youngster from Mallorca. Old-fashioned three-point play. Florida State now down seven. Chandler Jackson back in to run the point. You see that last possession right now. Boston College, what well, looks like a zone. Understanding that they're going to challenge Florida State to shoot the ball from outside and try to limit the penetration. Jackson good at getting into the paint. Can't finish, but look who's there. Cam Corrin. But here's the thing. Jackson was able to get to the basket, force the bigs to come over and help. Corrin comes up. No one puts a body on him, allows him to get that put back. Post and Kelly both on the floor with four fouls for BC. Zachary's been known to make a big shot. And this post wide open in the corner. Madsen, elbow extended. Got it! Nice shot by Madsen because he's such a deadly three-point shooter. You have to honor that. He was able to put the ball on the floor, get the defender to bite on the pump fake to get that shot up. Madsen's nails. Gravel in his guts. Florida State down seven. The way they're shooting the ball from deep, that's a big, big margin. They've only made one three-pointer. Loose. Jackson sent to the floor. Clean somehow. Post just blocked it out of bounds. Oh, wow. BC may have caught a break. You see Jackson on the penetration. You see Post comes over. Oh, it looked like it was my man, Zachary. We got a close one, partner. All right. Gonna hang on. They lead Florida State 58-51, 3.32 remaining. The drive of the game presented by Defender. You see great ball moving by Boston College. Devin McLaughlin comes in, initiate contact, was able to finish for the and one. Baba Miller goes out. But great drive by McLaughlin for the and one to allow BC to maintain their lead. Not only three points for BC, but it takes Baba Miller out of the game. Miller getting extended playing time with Matthew Cleveland not in uniform for the second consecutive game. All right, let's set it up. Three seconds on the shot clock for Florida State. Clearly they know this coming out of the timeout. I'd run something to try to get Green a jump shot, maybe a back swim, pin down, allow him to come off, or roll for a lob at the, at the rim. Trigger man, Jalen Worley. a gut punch for Boston College. I'd have to see that one again. Oh, that play was going nowhere for Florida State. Talk about a bailout. You see right there, you see a little bit, a little bit of a hold there by Post on Jackson. You see right there, and you see holding off and then getting caught. Uh, Hard being a seven footer. It Will is. Chamberlain used to say, Nobody roots for Goliath. Quinton Post is done. He's going to finish his ball game uh, with 21 points. Remember, he made five consecutive threes in our first half, but he is no longer a part of the mix. Double bonus, two free throws coming for Chandler Jackson. Freshman from Memphis. Everyone.
everyone has made their free throws for Florida State except for Caleb Mills. Now, Mills gets a little bit of a pass because he's been there 16 times. Well, well here's the thing is that their defense and the turnover and the free throws have really kept Florida State as he still gets that one to go. When you look at for the game, 10%. That is something. So a five-point game, pressure in the backcourt. BC playing without Quinton Post. Both teams have lost a player due to fouls. Ashton Lankford, who's got the ball, he's got four fouls. And here's the thing for Boston College, the clock is your friend. You run your set, you give yourself enough time to be able to try to make a play. Shot clocked out of four. Ashton Lankford. And a foul. State. It looks like Caleb Mims may get called for going over the back from McLaughlin. Solid defense, but you've got to come up with that off uh, that rebound. So Caleb Mills, who has been fouled himself 12 times, called for just his second foul. This is a one and one. One and one for McLaughlin, 73% free thrower. Confident. Don't forget, coming up next, we've got another game coming your way just down the road, down in Miami. We've got Wake Forest playing an important game for that program, taking on the Hurricanes. It's a fair fight. A couple good backcourts. Devin McLaughlin's had a solid afternoon, 12.6 boards, and has been that guy that when they've not had a post in the game has given them a nice little boost, especially from the power four position. You see no call right there on Zachary. Final three minutes of our game. Caleb Mills slips. BC's got it. Numbers. Zachary Madsen. McLaughlin first on the floor, taken away by Jackson. Can Florida State find a little bit of offense? This would be nice. Too strong for Green. Looked like it was right on line. And a foul going for the rebound. It's going to go against Florida State. That would have been a big shot if Green had knocked that down. All right, this is what it's going to look like. You get uh, Tyree Appleby leading the ACC in his first year playing at Wake Forest. Close to 19 points per ball game with six assists. I mean, talk about a walking bucket. You see his numbers almost 19 a game in the six dimes. Man, he puts a lot of pressure on the defense with his ability to get to the cup and knock down the three ball. Big moment at the free throw line for the freshman. Chaz Kelly misses the front end of a one and one. You'd think that Florida State has a chance here, but the way that their offense has been all afternoon long, you just got to wonder, where's Leonard Hamilton going to find it? His team is shooting 28%. They have made one out of 11 from behind the three-point line. If I go into the huddle of Earl Grant first, I may come out with a zone, understanding that this, like you said, this Florida State team does not shoot it well from behind the arc. Make sure I send everyone in for rebounds for Florida State. You got to find a way to get some quick buckets, and then even though Green has not shot it well, see if you can get him going. And again, you see, early to come back was the, their ability to be able to get some stops and get some early buckets. Green was one of those guys. But then the get downhill to be aggressive was one of the things that I thought that Florida State used to their advantage with the turnovers and getting nifty plays like this, breaking down and getting everyone those easy buckets right now. But Florida State has done a good job. Now go right back to that and send your bigs to the offensive glass on those challenges at the rim. Florida State, 24 made free throws, a new season high. 24 for 27 at the line. But free throws only going to get you so far. You need to score in multiples of twos and threes when you're down by seven with 214 remaining. Isaiah Wong getting some shots up. Just like Appleby, really good year. 1,600 points in his college career. That's coming up next. Wake Forest taking on the 15th ranked team of the country.
Fouls have been a huge story. Two guys have already fouled out. Baba Miller for Florida State. Quentin Post for Boston College. BC, two players with four fouls. Chaz Kelly and Makai Ashton Lakeford. You, you, you watch her, was it? He's sitting there. He's getting down. You know he wants to get out of here with this win. He's coaching these guys from the sideline already in the defensive position. Green gets the screen. Jackson. Warley. Nice teardrop. Nice bucket. Nice penetration by Jackson. Boston College has already got 19 turnovers. Florida State being able to capitalize with 13 points off the turns. You stay solid. Again, for BC, where do you go for a bucket right now? Madsen's a pretty good option. Oh, stolen away, Wally! Oh, Mr. Mr. Chippy. Last touch by Florida State, and Worley's beside himself. Oh, Worley had an opportunity to cut the lead down to, to three. Again, we were just talking for BC, already 19 turnovers at 20. Watch him get there, and then opportunity for him and Ashton Lifer. You just go in and try to come up with that with a missed opportunity for Florida State. Trying to get the ball back, the foul committed. McLaughlin goes to the line. And this is now the double bonus. So two free throws, a little bit of pressure taken off McLaughlin. He's perfect at the line this afternoon. Looks perfect, too. See how that works. You know, I said perfect, and then, you know, no color analyst jinx thing. <laughs> wow, just look at the stroke. That's a good-looking stroke. He's going to make this more often than not. That's a free throw right there, folks. McLaughlin makes a pair. Seven-point game. Final 90 seconds. Worley tried to atone. Jackson fouled from behind. McLaughlin got him. Jackson can do a lot of things in the ACC in the next handful of years with that body of his. He is a freshman listed at 6'5", 215. And he looks solid. Again, he talked about his ability to absorb contact. He's got a nice little burst going to the basket. Two important free throws. His parents were huge fans of the TV show Friends. That's how he got his name. He's named for Chandler Bing from Friends. Love it. I got nothing. <laughs> I'm not making it up, folks. <laughs> All right, one more coming. Bing! Makes a pair, and it's a five-point game. Still plenty of time. You know what, five five points. If you're BC, you got to get the ball in. Nice play, gets the ball into. And Zachary is fouled hard, and this is going to be reviewed. Jaden Zachary knew he was going to get uh, fouled, and he is fouled hard. And, and, and all the way, and he takes him all the way to the ground. Nice out of bounds play, and again, watch it right there. Does he make a play on the ball? Uh, came across those arms. That may be deemed excessive. I have two guys who have played a lot of basketball, knowing the importance of that play. And Darren Green, know he's going to be called for the foul, but is this a foul plus? Well, what this does is it gives both sides a chance to catch their breath and just come up with a plan. 116 left in our game. Second half has been close throughout. DC built a 19-point lead in the first half, and Florida State has whittled it away, one time getting within as close as four. Looking at Zachary's numbers, uh, has not attempted a free throw today. Only has two points. Does have five assists and three rebounds. Just from where I sit, that seems excessive. I understand that 
he was going for the foul. And I think they're going to look at whether he actually made a play on the ball. I think the play for Darren Green may have been, considering how fast Zachary was going, almost like play as if you're going to follow him, let your hands back, kind of like pulling the chair out. I would have taken my eyes to that. Zachary's a good free throw shooter. He's a gutty player. All right, this is what we're talking about. Big difference in the game. Top shelf. Eight of 17 three-point shots made for Boston College. Compare that to Florida State as a team they've made one out of 11 from behind the arc. In the first half, we were talking about how Boston College was shooting the lights out of it, and then Florida State doing a better job. But then you look at in the second half, nine of 12 on layup attempts. Then we talked about Caleb Mills with 23 points. The turnovers for Florida State and being able to get down hills will allow them to be able to get back in the game because statistically they didn't really shoot the ball that well but they were able to capitalize on the turnovers just a reminder we got another game coming your way Blake Forest at Miami an important one really for both sides you get Miami 15th ranked team in the country they don't want to stub their toe but wait Grant's over there trying to see if he can do pull his best lip lip reading and yeah, trying to get Talent. to a quorum right there and I think they're going to go back all right the decision's been made and we're going to get the input all right so after uh, much thought and contemplation it's deemed to be a common foul Common foul, two shots. I guess you were right there, partner. I would right. I actually thought that that was a little bit more. I just thought the defense played by Darren Green. I thought the way Zachary was going, maybe a little bit out of control. I would have taken my odds that maybe he'd miss the layup. And, and here's the thing. Zachary has not been at the free throw line this afternoon. Interested in the C. Again, they definitely need these two. Zachary's the type of player. He didn't miss free throws down the stretch games. Yeah, that, that was money. That was money. No, no, no. That's just that, that's what Earl Grant has. When he gave a scholarship offer, this is what he said. Late in games, Jaden, you're making free throws for me. So that makes it a seven-point lead. Tip the pass finds its way to Green. Nothing falling. Madsen can't corral the rebound. Green able to keep it. for a dollar and again for Florida State you want to be able to trap Zachary is fouled again and, and here's the thing how about the save by Jackson watch this and then Green gets it realizes that hey just wow. pick it up and let it go oh. I'm telling you that reminded me of Dennis Scott back when you played him at Georgia nice Tech. call nice call but watch he kind of tippy toes there doesn't put his heels on the floor and just comes right back up and what a play by Green to knock down that shot so Zachary back for a pair shoots those with the swagger of a NASCAR veteran been there won that lead is back up to five not only gravel in his guts but spit in his eye and here's the thing, you see Boston College extends a little bit. If you're Madison, you stay close to green. Final 45 seconds. Mills continues to be a foul magnet, got wet. Was he behind the yard? Are they going to give him three free throws? Oh, my God. Interesting to see. It, they are going to give him three free throws, wow. and you see this last play. And if you're... See, if, you, if you're Ashton Langford, you don't bite on that. You realize that Mills is not a three-point shooter. Once he bit on the paint pump fake, then he got you off the ground. Ashton Langford just fouled out. 
So this is uh, just a disastrous time down the floor for Boston College. And now Post has already fouled out. Ashton Langston, Lankford just fouled out. And now you're going to get three free throws for one of the best free throw shooters in the conference in Caleb Mills. And you've lost your top two scores and then probably one of your better per perimeter defenders. Now with 46 seconds left to go, Florida State's got a chance to cut this lead down to three. If Mills makes all three, he will set the new Florida State ACC record for free throws made in a game. The record currently is 15 by Al Thornton. Did it against Duke back in March of 2006. Mills has made 14 free throws. I knew you did it. I, knew, I was like, you know what? He did it. I, you know what? I was like, stop reading. I, I, you know what, man? <laughs> all right, he still could make this one and tie. Florida State's ACC record. All right, move aside, Al Thornton, you've got company. Al Thornton, Caleb Mills now with the school record. More importantly, it's a four-point game. And a foul in the backcourt will walk the other way and have double bonus free throws for Mason Madsen. Is that Madsen or is that McLaughlin going to the foul, to the free throw line? I thought it was Madsen and the way he's walking down the floor. Nope, it is McLaughlin. Let's see if it works for me because he has been perfect at the line. Eight for eight. Not sure he's hit the rim either. Hit the rim, but it still counts. Again, obviously Florida State wants to try to extend this game, but when it gets to be a free throw shooting contest, you want your best free throw shooters to come to the ball. McLaughlin knocks that down. McLaughlin 10 for 10 at the free throw line. We've had a combined 59 free throws. Jackson the misfire. And a league bay is foul. So a league bay will come the other way and shoot two times. First free throws of the game for a league bay. 61% for the freshman at the line. And Lee Bay's had a solid afternoon. Seven points, seven rebounds. One three. Two important free throws for him this afternoon to, to seal this win. Getting an update from Miami. Good start for the Hurricanes. They lead Wake Forest 13-12. We'll get you that game immediately at the conclusion of this one. Door slightly still open there. One out of two for a league bay. Boston College, you want to extend. You do not want to get Florida State just free one. You want them to use a little time. Get up the floor and you stay solid. You do not want to foul. Green missed everything. BC ball. So we've gone under 30 seconds. Shot clock is off the remainder of regulation. For Boston College, you want to get the ball in and force Florida State to foul you. Tom House will come in. He replaces Worley. Florida State, you want to try to get the ball in the corners, force a quick trap to see if you can get an easy steal. If not, then you immediately foul and try to, to extend this game. Smart play by Zachary. Uh, is that going to be off of BC? It is. Yeah, you see House came in. Great tip, I think, by what may have been Mills and then House pushed the ball off of them and Florida State has the ball. And now Florida State wants to call a... Is this a timeout or just using the stoppage? Yeah. Officials are going to make sure that that ball was indeed off of Boston College. And Florida State will use it as a de facto timeout to draw something up. You see that last play. What looks to be Jackson gets his hand on the ball. And then House comes over. Presence of mind to knock it off of McLaughlin. Again. Bought the play by the House right there. Florida State ball. So the original call on the floor was Florida State ball. The, the indisputable video evidence to overturn. I don't think that exists. So it's going to be Florida State basketball. 
Down by seven. 26.4 remaining. Wow, that is a great shot. That's the one you need right there. Looks like the ball wanted to go off of Tom House, but it went right through the legs. Boston College, their only win here in Tallahassee. Long time ago, 16 years. Be a big win for Earl Grant. His team has gone four and four in their last eight games, all ACC games. So you win today, you go five and four, nine game stretch, a lot of road games. It'll be over 500 in league play. What's huge is for them to get another road win, and again, this could push them to seven and ten with what looks to be what three or four more games. And when we talked to him early, looking for consistency from his team. We see with. Florida State with the ball. We've seen stranger things happen. 25.8 on the game clock. House fires. Loose. Corin. Pennies from heaven. Florida State calls a quick timeout. Seminoles still think they've got a chance. Five point game. Final 19.7. For 46 years straight, more of you have trusted Ford F-Series trucks to help save the day. Stretch the weekend, haul, or tow. Just about anything, anywhere. That's because they're built Ford tough. And it's why Ford F-Series are America's best-selling trucks 46 years straight. And for that, we thank you. Get 2-9 for 60, plus up to 2,500 with eligible trade-in. Learn more about pickup and delivery and remote service at your local Ford dealer. Been an unusual game here on a Saturday afternoon. At Tucker Center, Tallahassee, Florida. The locals down by five. Seminoles gonna have to play some defense. Look for a steal. If they can't get one, commit a quick foul. Both sides have been in the double bonus for a while now. We saw the last play, Florida State being able to get that turnover. Jackson got his hand on the ball. And you see the alignment from Boston College. Madsen is fouled in the corner. Madsen is a really good outside shooter, but not necessarily elite as a free throw shooter. 71%. And the foul committed by Cam Corin. His fifth. He's done. Both sides have had two men foul out. Corin and Miller for Florida State. Post and Ashton Lankford for BC. If for some reason we get to overtime, we're going to be running out of players. They'll be looking for Charlie Ward. Get a uniform. Well, how is Matson a 71% free throw shooter? That looked nice. Matson makes a pair. Florida State on life support. Need a bucket right here. And Mills all game long just be getting fouled time and time again. He needs one free throw here. He's going to have two to set a new Florida State ACC record for free throws made in a game. But here's the thing. If I'm Earl Grant, I tell my guys to, to defend without fouling because I'm, we do not want that clock to stop. You're up seven. So that's your new ACC record for free throws made in a game. 16 for Caleb Mills. He's 16 for 20. He's had 14 shots in the field and 20 free throw attempts. That is now 35 times he's shot the ball either at the line or from the field. Five point game. Final 12 seconds. And Zachary is fouled. So Zachary will come the other way and shoot free throws. A combined 65 free throws with two more coming. Earl Grant's team on the road is going to attempt 33 free throws, maybe more. Florida State has already shot 34 free throws and made 30 of them. 
Can't say enough about Jaden Zachary. Off day offensively, just one for five shooting. But when you ask him to make a late game free throw, automatic. From A to Z, Jaden Zachary. Florida State quickly the other way. Maybe the final shot of our game. Green splashes a three. And Leonard Hamilton calls a timeout. That's a four-point game. 3.1 remaining. And Green still with a glimmer of hope for Florida State. Obviously, I think that for Leonard Hamilton, you try to draw up something, and you see this last play, see the penetration by Mills, touches the paint, he set out to Green, realizes that he does not have time on his side and lets it fly. Again, great penetration. You see Madsen a little late. Green gets it up. Darren Green had made one of his first nine three-point attempts. He's made his last two. So it's been a while, but it's been worth the wait for Florida State. He keeps his team in it. You know that's that saying, better late than never. So Boston College, they need to inbound the ball. They need to survive contact, maybe make a free throw. But they can't slip up here. Four-point game. Mm. Maybe a young mistake there by Chaz Kelly. He inbounded it to the worst free throw shooter on the floor. Yeah, I thought about that. You know, getting the ball over to a league bay, and then they're talking about it. I thought that that play would have been to basically get the ball over to Zachary. <laughs> Why'd you pass it to me? <laughs> so a league bay, 61% at the line. He'll have two, double bonus. BC almost can't screw this up, right? They're up four. Florida State does not have a timeout. They can't advance it, so this is kind of it. Okay, there you go. Prince of League Bay slams the door shut on Florida State. Five-point game, 2.2 remaining. This is going to be the first win for Boston College here in this building since 2007. Congratulations to Earl Grant and the Eagles. And a league bait saying, you're right to pass it to me. <laughs> There's our final shot of the game. Jackson off the mark. And this one is in the books. 75-69 is your final score. Hope you enjoyed it. From my partner, Brian Oliver, I'm Eric Collins. And I'll let's send you to Coral Gables, where Tom Wormy is standing by. And we welcome those of you who just watched Boston College win on the road in Tallahassee against Florida State, 73-69. We've got a 